You know how hard it is to get over on a fucking Virgo? Virgo is always looking for the angle. What's your angle, bitch? Why you here for? Why you sitting over there? Hey, lawyer. Lawyer, who's that cat over there? Am I paying him? What is his job? What is he doing? <laughs> Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com for these Miss Hollywood DC shades. I don't know if we got, I think we got like one or two left. I'm just trying to get rid of all the, you know, spring, summer stuff so I can make room for the fall. Eventually I will be showing you, uh, what I decided to add to the fall collection. But as of right now, like I said, I'm trying to get rid of some shit. And if you are not already a part of our book club, Please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, book club members. Remember that the next book we're going to be doing, because I believe that this Michael Jackson book is going to carry us through to Thanksgiving. We're starting Thanksgiving Day. It's going to be The Color Purple. And then after we finish The Color Purple, we're going to move on to the next book. The paying book club members already know. You other ones don't. Now, let's continue talking about the magic, the madness, the whole story, 1958 through 2009. Michael Jackson by Randy Tarbolele. Later in the month, Michael went into the studio with Diana Ross to produce a song for her called I Want My Souls. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I love that. It's a sexy, super sexy song and remember when we read uh donna ross's book call her miss ross and uh donna ross was like i don't know if he wrote the song for me or for him but muscles was the name of his pet snake okay but okay michael was ecstatic about the opportunity to produce a record for his idol at this time diana had left motown and was recording her second album for rca Silk Electric. The album was shaping up to be a disaster and she needed something outstanding on the collection, which is why she contacted Michael. I was coming back from England working on Paul McCartney's album, Zooming Along on the Concord, and this song popped into my head, Michael recalled. I said, hey, that's perfect for Diana. I didn't have a tape recorder or anything, so I had to suffer for like three hours. Soon as I got home, I whipped that baby. Soon as I got home, I whipped that baby on tape. Diana has said that Michael seemed intimidated by her while the two of them worked together in the studio. He couldn't bring himself to direct her. I get it. You're the man, Diana insisted. An admiring look in her eyes. You're the boss on this one. Diana wanted Michael to take control of the recording session, but it was difficult for him. In the end, the song just sort of produced itself, said a friend of Diana's. The kinky lyrics of muscles extolled the joys of a man's muscles all over your body. I don't know whether it's supposed to be Michael's fantasy or mine, Diana said when it was finally released. Oh shit. Either way, it was a top 10 record for Diana. <laughs> Baby, listen to me There is something you have to 
began in Memphis, Tennessee on July 9th, 1981, and ended with a record-breaking sellout four-night engagement at the Los Angeles Forum. The biggest numbers of the show were always Michael's solo songs from the Off The Wall album. <laughs> There was also special effects arranged by magician Doug Henning. Michael seemed to disappear into a puff of smoke after performing Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Offstage, Michael also seemed to want to disappear, rarely socializing with his brothers or the rest of the entourage. This is my last tour, he promised anyone who asked. I will never do this again. Being on the road with him made the Jackson brothers realize how far Michael had distanced himself from them. He started talking to the press about the possibility of a solo career. I think that will happen gracefully in the future, he told Paul Green of Billboard. I think the public will ask for it. That's definitely going to happen. It was not what their brothers wanted to hear. It didn't help them feel any more secure when Michael began involving himself more in the business end of the show. For instance, okay, remember Michael the Jackson got that lawyer over there named John Bracker, Bronca. Okay, Bronca, Bronca. Y'all set me straight. That's not uh, Polly, Polly's little brother Tootie or Tooley from the Sopranos, that's somebody else. They told me, y'all told me that John Branca, Branca is full of shit, okay? And that you Jackson fans, you moonwalkers can't stand that white man, okay? Y'all still pissed at him over some. But at any rate, what Michael Jackson did, cause he noticing, you know, the business aspect, okay, we got all these trucks right here, okay, all right. Um, what happens if one of these trucks break down? The brothers was like, why are you worrying yourself about that? Michael Jackson thinking his head like, oh, y'all tripping because this is our money, especially mine, because I'm the one bringing the most money to the tour. I mean, I love you brothers, okay? But uh, what happens if one of these trucks break down? Are we going to have to pay for room and board? Are we going to have to buy brand new trucks? Uh, what's going to happen here? Because little things like this add up. Michael's that guy. I need to keep my money because remember earlier, Tara Bolele told us that he had made more than a million dollars off off the wall. and He planned on keeping that one million dollars in his account. How you going to keep more than a million dollars in your account if you got to pay for shit? Like if the moving trucks get flat tires. No, I need, do we need to put some extra insurance on this? Let's take care of that. But the brothers was irritated. Just sing, Michael. He here to just sing with you. Michael ignored his older brother's remark left the stage area and found a telephone. He called John Bronca. He wanted me to explain a paragraph that dealt with what happened if the truck broke down, if it had a flat tire or the road washed out. John recalled, I explained the paragraph. He asked a couple of questions and said, okay, I understand. He was all about details, always with the details, wanting to know everything. Ain't he a Virgo? And that's why you ninjas will never get over on a Virgo. Do you know how hard it is to get over on a fucking Virgo? Virgo is always looking for the angle. What's your angle, bitch? Why you here for? Why you sitting over there? Hey, lawyer. Lawyer, who's that cat over there? Am I paying him? What is his job? What is he doing? Around this time, Michael finally learned to drive so he could leave this state when it became too difficult for him there. Singer Mickey Free, formerly of the group Shalimar, remembered his first meeting with Michael in the fall of 1981. I was signed to Diana Ross's management company at the time. She was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel and asked me if I wanted to come down to her bungalow and meet Michael. Well, who wouldn't? 
he recalled. So I had dinner with Michael, Diana, and Gene Simmons of Kiss, Diana's boyfriend at the time. You know, the one who she stole from her girlfriend, Shay. Or was they sharing that man? Ooh, that was the one with the tongue, too. Ooh, my God! Oh, oh, ooh. I think he was Israeli or something. Ooh, that tongue. Oh, my God. Oh. You know who else got a tongue like that? That motherfucking Cardi B. Ooh. Ooh. Mmm. Her ratchet ass. I was freaking out because I always wanted to meet Michael and he was so nice. So it came time for me to go home. Diana's car had brought me there and she said, okay, I'll call the driver to come and get you. And Michael was like, don't worry about it. I'll take him home. Yeah, all right. Diana Ross nervous. Michael Jackson, you finna get behind the wheel? I don't know. Okay, so anyway, they hopped into Michael Jackson's, what was it, a, a Rolls Royce, a Silver Shadow Rolls Royce. Donna Ross standing outside of the bungalow clutching her pearls like, Gene, I don't know, baby. I don't know if they gonna make it home, I'm worried. Bye, bye, I'll see you later. Bye, Diana. Donna Ross like, ooh. Gene, I don't know if they gonna make it. Anyway, they go flying out the driveway. They get to Mickey Free's house. They made it there safely. Okay. The concern was, yes, he can drive, but the motherfucker can't park. He turned to Mickey and was like, okay, we're here. Can you park the car for me, please? Mickey was like, okay. Listen, I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. You hear me? But that motherfucking parallel parking is going to be a concern. Listen, I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., and there is nothing but parallel parking. There is no driveways in Washington, D.C., unless you didn't call the city and ask special permission, hey, can I put a driveway on my own land? Because technically, you don't own the land. You just own the house on the land when it comes to Washington, D.C. But anyway, there's no such thing as driving parking. Everything is a parallel park. Okay, that's why the parking is so bad in Washington, D.C. I would assume it's the same thing in New York. Okay, that's why I bought a Mercedes that can park itself. <laughs> Girl, don't let that Mercedes name fool your child because the people's told me that my car ain't nothing but the Nissan Ultima of the Mercedes Benz fleet. I said, oh, well, maybe I should have bought me a Nissan Ultima. Okay, you never know until later, you know, after you spend all your fucking money. By the fall of 1981, despite CBS Records' best efforts to keep the Jackson family's domestic turmoil a secret, most industry insiders were aware of what had happened between Catherine and Gina because of the public filings of the lawsuit litigation. Michael had made it clear that he did not want to have to face any reporters because he was afraid that he might be asked to comment on the matter. However, the press grind to promote triumph would continue. Michael's wishes notwithstanding. Yeah,